Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Our Reality. My name is Kent, and I'm your host, along with former Real Housewife of Orange County, Jeannie Keough. Today, we do a Q&A with questions we asked all of you on Gina's Instagram. And later, we talk to Peggy Tanis about what she's doing now and how to stay healthy holistically. So everyone, we're going to do a Q&A with Gina. And uh, I asked people on Instagram what questions they had for her. Uh, and the first one is, can we get the Playboy photos back? You're more beautiful now than ever, said B. Schmidt 77. What does that mean, Kent? I don't know. <sighs> I don't know what that means. So that was kind of a silly question. Can we get the playbook? Of course, you can get them online. I think they, they mean you them. now doing it. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> I may be in my prime, but not my naked prime. <laughs> All right. And then um, Los Angeles Medium asks, your anti-aging secrets and advice for people on dating apps. My advice on dating apps is be honest. Don't lie about what you look like because then you're going to get a guy saying, hey, you need to buy me drinks until you look like your picture. (laughs) Right. Um, Anti-aging, I always looked 20 years younger than my actual age. That was just my Wisconsin genetics. Wow. That's great. So do you have any skincare tips for anyone? Um, I try to get a facial. I try to get a facial quite a bit. Yeah. And then Brad Tomeo asks, would you come back to Real Housewives of Orange County? I'm actually filming with them this week. So yes, of course. Oh, wow. That's exciting. Can you tell anyone what you're doing with that? Or is it still kind of a secret? Um, The new girl who's on the new, I don't know if they've announced the cast, have they? I'm not sure. I think so, though. I think they did. Yeah. Well, there's a new girl. Mm-hmm. And she has invited me to be at an event she's having. Oh, how fun. Uh, and have you had any offers since your exit, like before this opportunity to go back? Oh, I, I go back always. It seems like once a year I do something for Bravo. Right. And then Jessica asks, what is your favorite restaurant in Orange County? Eddie V's Wild Fish is my favorite restaurant in Orange County. My second favorite is Ruth Chris. That's always a good one. Love, I still love it. I love John, the customer service there. At Eddie V's, I always try to get Cody. He's amazing. He just makes it so much fun. I just went there for my birthday the other day. It was super fun. Nice. John wants to know, will you open up a web store so I can buy an autographed photo? You are one of my favorites. Um, no, but I sell, I sell my autographs all the time. I sell pictures and autographs. People send them to me, so... He can just D- DM me and I'll give him the information. But yeah, I do that all the time. They send me pictures of Vicky and I that they took that they want autographed or Aww. Playboy pictures. That's nice. And then yeah. GS3RD asks, what was going through your mind when Tamrat threw the drink? And are you still close with Ben? Uh, ben is so busy teaching aerobics class. I see him maybe once a year. He's so busy and he looks so amazing. So I don't see him much, but we do talk because he does, his partner handles all my computer stuff. So I do hear from them. Yeah. And Tammy, when she walked towards me, I'd been across the room and I noticed that she was acting upset and it was definitely an act. You could tell she was huffing and puffing and complaining and glaring around. And I said, wow, she must've had a fight with Simon. Right. She's really trying to act like she's mad. Um, <laughs> it was too forced. It wasn't, it wasn't real. Right. right. If, you, if you saw the show and then when she came over to me, I, my second thought was, wow, where did she get that glass of wine? Not that I'm a big wine drinker, but the rest of us were drinking out of these little tiny glasses and she had like a freaking gallon jar, you know? Oh my gosh. Yeah. So that was my, and then when she threw it at me, then it all came together and I realized why the producers when Tamara walked towards me, why there were people in the crowd pulling people away from us Mm -hmm. because they knew everybody knew she was going to do that. So then I was upset. Right. I was upset that they allowed her to throw that at me. I mean, luckily I just came from work and I had a $300 dress on, but if I would have had like everybody else had these thousand dollar dresses on, but right. I didn't because I literally came from work. Mm. Yeah. That's horrible that they would plan that. 
Yeah, they knew what she was going to do. She had a piece of paper and she called it a cyst and deceased. Oh my gosh. And it's really a cease and desist, not deceased right. like dead and cyst like a pimple. Oh my God. And then it was a blank piece of paper because Ben did grab it because he wanted to read it. So it was a blank piece of paper. And oh, wow. she had planned all day to do that. I had just won a popularity contest mm. in the Orange County Register where I was 86% favorite. And she was just probably thinking, I'm going to throw this in her face. Oh my gosh. Today, we have Peggy Tannis on the show. Uh, she is a former Real Housewife of Orange County. And we can't wait to catch up with her. So how are you today, Peggy? Hi, Kent. I'm doing great. How are you doing? Hi, Gina. Hi. It's been so long since I've talked to you. I know. For a while, I would see you all the time and talk to you. Yes. So what are you up to now? Oh, my gosh. I'm just crazy busy with, you know, a, a teenager and then another daughter that will be a teenager next year. And I've got some new projects going. and. I'm doing a lot of uh, influencer marketing and just trying to help with a lot of charities. So just staying really busy. Tell me about um, what are you doing? What's your new project? Are you doing TV or film or? Uh... I'm doing a new show that's all, it's a, it's a new show that I wrote and uh, created and it's all around the luxury uh, lifestyle that we all live here in Orange County. I love that. I hope you're going to invite me to be on it. Of course. I'm going to have you as my realtor for one of the properties. That's great. Cool. And I can always take you into some luxury properties too. That'd be amazing. Perfect. I, have you talked to any of the other housewives lately? Oh, yeah. I talk to Lizzie and Lynn all the time. I see Lizzie probably once a week. I see Lynn sometimes mm -hmm. once a week. Um, I'll see Lynn tonight, actually. Uh, I talk to Gretchen. I, t I talk to a lot of them. I mean, Lori Peterson, we haven't spoken as much lately. She's so busy with raising Kennedy. Um, but yeah, I pretty much, I talked to, you know, Joe. Uh, we kind of send us you of course and gosh who else do i talk to uh, i've been talking to elizabeth vargas we've been messaging each other lately i just met her on instagram is she on the show she's not on this year no she's not on but we have so, so many do you know any of the new girls so yes i do know um the new girl nicole that is coming on so i'm she, yeah, oh, she's her. really sweet i'm friends with her um so she'll she'll be the new wife and one of the new wives and obviously, I know Heather. Um, Heather came on when I decided to leave, so she, so she's coming back. And then I've never met Noella, and I also know Dr. Armstrong. I've actually been Dr. Armstrong. She um, had Lynn and I host like a couple events for her at her uh, practice. So I've met Dr. Armstrong a few times. Oh, I'm actually going to one of her events this week at the Balboa Bay Club. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yep. 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 So that should be fun. So Peggy, a lot of people want to know, uh, you and Alexis, Alexis Bellino had some issues on the show and have you guys resolved those? You know, unfortunately not there. I mean, for me, there was nothing to resolve, but for her, you know, she couldn't get over what happened. And, you know, if that's how she feels, then that's how she feels. But um, you know, we've seen each other. I mean, we've been at several Bravo events together. Um, when she was still with Jim, we would run into them socially in Newport. And I'm always very cordial. And, you know, she would say hi. But but unfortunately, she just uh, couldn't get past anything that she felt, you know, I however she felt I wronged her. So, so yeah, unfortunately not. But in my eyes, it, it really didn't even have anything to do with the whole, you know, Peggy Jim Alexis thing. It, it I mean, I found out that she didn't even know anything about that whole situation until a week before we started filming. Um, oh my God. Yeah. So it was very um, <laughs> uncomfortable when we started filming, but what, what I, I found out later that a month before she even knew about this, she was the one that told me like, Hey, I want you to come on the show. And then she must've changed her mind or Jim must've, you know, been, you know, afraid if I did that, you know, he'd have to confront her or tell her about all this. So anyways, she, a month before I even got on, I had called her and, or actually we were together in Vegas and I had just gotten the call that it was basically down to me and one other girl for the part of being on Housewives. 
And I told her, and you would think that, you know, we're supposed to be such good friends that you would think she'd be like, oh my God, I'm so excited. Let's get some champagne and celebrate. And it was like a deer in headlights, like, oh my God. And then apparently that night she called Gretchen and had said, if, if Peggy gets on the show, I'm going to quit. Wow. And so I just never, why? I don't know. And it just, why was she so mad at you? Whatever. I don't know what happened. I guess I missed that episode. Well, and that's the thing is like, I, I don't ever, and the problem, and the thing was, is she didn't even know at this point yet that Jim and I had dated back, you know, right. eight, 10 years before that. So I don't understand Who why. Who would care? Exactly. So unfortunately, you know, for me, I have nothing against her. I wish her only the best. I'm happy that she's happy engaged now. And you know, I, and everything, but I just, unfortunately she couldn't get over anything and I don't know if it's an insecurity or whatever, but yeah. So we just, we've never rekindled the friendship. It sounds like she might be a little bit jealous of you, at least before when all that happened. I don't know. I just, I, I really don't know, but, um, you know, it's just, it's disappointing, uh, because, because I did think that we were very close and, and what's more disappointing is like I said, before any of that got brought up to, to have someone tell me that, you know, she, she, d she didn't want to, you know, she didn't want me on. It was like, okay, well, I'm confused because she didn't even know any of that yet. And here we were good friends and she's the one that told me to get on. So right on to bigger and better things. But yeah, so I haven't spoken. To her. Isn't that crazy? Huh? Well, I'm excited about this season. I think it's going to be more interesting. Same here. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, absolutely. I think they definitely needed to do a reboot. Um, and I, I'll be excited to see what, what happens. So the new girl, Jen Armstrong, she must be married and have kids or obviously she wouldn't be on the housewives, right? Well, there's a lot of people that, I mean, the new girl, Nicole coming on, she's not married and she has a boyfriend, but she's not married. And, you know, I think, I, I don't know that that's such a prerequisite anymore for housewives. I mean, it would be kind of nice if it was. But. And Noelle is married or not married? Uh, from what I just read, she is married, but I guess they're going through a divorce. That's so sad. Yeah. I liked him. I met them once. They were very nice. That's sad. Well, hopefully they can work it out. Isn't he that guy from the billboards? Yeah, that's him. Isn't he? I think someone told me he's the guy from the billboards. Sweet James or something. Yeah. Sweet James. He's a personal injury attorney. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we just talked about that with Dana, yeah. I think. I love Dana. Dana's yeah, He's a personal injury attorney and he's accused of something, but you're in my book you're innocent until you're proven guilty. So, right. Exactly. I agree. So Peggy, I remember on the show that you were into holistic medicine and that whole way of life. Are you still into that sort of thing and doing all that? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm very into uh, you know, I don't do prescription drugs and, and I, and I, you know, I eat or my whole family we eat everything organic and, um, you know, we try to do anything we can. We try to always first come up with a, a natural solution. And, you know, if we have to, then we may go the other route, but we typically try to do everything naturally. Okay. That's great. Uh, what are some holistic tips and like medicines or different things uh, that we could all use to stay healthy right now, especially during the pandemic and with COVID? Well, hydrogen peroxide is like the end all be all. And I don't think people realize how many uses it has. And so for instance, you know, when I go to the, I go to farmer's market a lot and buy my vegetables and fruit. And when I come home, I will fill up a bowl full of water and then I pour in, you know, probably like half a cup of hydrogen peroxide. And I soak everything in there for like 15 minutes and that will pull out any, um, if there's any pesticides in there, which obviously if it's organic, there normally isn't, but you just don't know, you know, where it's been. So it will pull out any dirt, anything that, that doesn't belong there. But beyond that, hydrogen peroxide's so great for anything. I mean, we can, if you put it in a spray bottle, you can spray it on your counters and clean your counters and disinfect. And I mean, it can, if you want some, some quick highlights in your hair, you can put some in your hair. I mean, <laughs> there's so many uses for it. Oh my gosh. So I really, that's great. I love hydrogen peroxide. Um, lemons, lemons are great. Same thing with lemon. If you know, they say if you put lemon in your water every morning, that will help so that you don't ever get cancer. And it's, uh, it also can lighten your hair and obviously it smells great. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I just try to right. do that. And, uh, colloidal silver is another big, big tip that I would tell people to look into. 
Yeah. What do you do with that one? I have that and I forgot how to use it. I was just going to talk to you about that. Uh, my mom uses it all the time and it's, what does she do with it? It's supposed to, um, I think like cure sore throats and you can, I think if I'm not mistaken, you can put it in your eye if you get like an infection and it can help that go down. Yeah. I've been using it for years and you have to be, yeah, your mother is right and you're correct. You can use it for all these different things, but you have to be careful which form you're using. So for instance, if it's uh, like, mm-hmm. say, you know, you have a toenail that's kind of funky, like maybe you got a fungus on it or something from the spa, or maybe it's discolored from too much nail polish or whatever, you want to put the gel on that. But for something like your eye and your throat, you want to get it in a spray form. Okay. Um, so you have to just make sure that you, so I have it, I have it in like every form and Micah even started using the, uh, my husband, Micah, he's been using it in his nose because he has really bad sinuses. Oh, wow. And he bought a colloidal silver nose spray that you spray up your nose and that helps with any, you know, making sure you don't get any bacteria in your nose or any infection. So has that helped him like declog his nose? Do you know? It has. Absolutely. It's better than doing Afrin. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's so cool. Yeah, we'll have to have, we should have like a little holistic day. We'll, we'll come up with all the, a bunch of different things people can do that you, they can just find in their house. Right. Yeah. I soak all my vegetables in half vinegar, half water. And that's really good. Too. I've never used. Yeah. You can do that as well. Peroxide, yeah. um, vinegar is great. I mean, vinegar is another product like hydrogen peroxide that you can pretty much use it for almost anything. You can use it for uh, counters as well. Just sometimes the vinegar doesn't smell as good and hydrogen peroxide doesn't have a smell. So that's why it's odorless. You're right. Right. I was so fascinated when I put it on my blueberries and little bugs came crawling out of the stem. Oh my God. Blueberries. Oh. I almost died. Almost died. (laughs) Oh my God. All these little bugs started floating to the surface. See, but that shows you it's working. (laughs) Oh Yeah. Gina, do you use the apple cider vinegar or just white vinegar? White vinegar. Okay. White vinegar, yeah. My pharmacist told me that. She yeah, brings everything home and washes her apples, washes, soaks everything for a few minutes. But I have a trouble with it because I don't like my raspberries to get mushy. Well, so pretty much. You have right. to just make sure you only leave them in like for five minutes and then rinse them after. Yeah. And then eat them pretty quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. So, Peggy, what's your favorite memory from doing Real Housewives of Orange County? Ooh. Oh, gosh, I have so many. But I think my favorite, unfortunately, they didn't even air it, which is typical. <laughs> but uh, Capri, my daughter Capri, when we were filming for season six, Capri learned, uh, she took her first steps on camera, which Aww. was amazing. Oh my and God. I would have loved if they would have showed it. They didn't air it, but it was, it was, and I wish I could have gotten the footage. I was like, can I get some of this? And they're like, no, we can't, but oh. it was really special. So I loved that. And, um, and I would say all maybe, the trips, the trips were always fun too. You know, our trip season six, it wasn't, I mean, it was fun and I love Texas, but our trip was, you know, wasn't like as extravagant as the trips are taking now. I mean, now they're on a whole new level. And I mean, obviously not. Oh my during God, COVID, a bigger but, budget. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. Much bigger <laughs> budget. So it's, you know, I, 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 uh, I, I always think back like, Oh gosh, maybe I should have stayed a couple more years to get some of the really good trips. <laughs> <laughs> so did you leave because of issues you were having on the show or did they ask you to leave or how did, how did that all happen? So I chose to leave. What happened is I signed a five-year contract and I don't know if that's standard or, you know, whatever I think, I think it is, or maybe at that, that time it was, but I signed five years, but then how it works is you sign five years, but then they have the right to every year. If they're not happy, they can, you know, basically tell you to leave. Um, I signed five years. I did season six. It went great. Um, you know, they asked me to come back for season seven and I started getting, I had um, postpartum depression, which you guys saw on the show. And um, I was so stressed out from it. And the whole thing with Alexis, because I was being a good friend and I told her, you know, oh, I won't bring up anything because it was, it wasn't my reality. You know, that was 10 years ago. So I was like, I don't need to bring up anything about, you know, Jim and she didn't want to bring it up. And, and so um, they just, because then it came out at the reunion, it, it was, you know, then that's what they wanted to make the entire season seven about. 
And I was already so stressed out and losing weight and just anxiety ridden and just not in a good place. And I felt like my children were just so little. I mean, when we started season seven, you know, pre was turning two. And, um, so I just, they, they, um, they'd asked me to go to a party. It was going to be like the first party that we were all going to film together. And I hadn't signed my contract yet because I was, you know, still negotiating stuff. And I was just also just freaking out. Like, can I really handle this? Right. And, um, and so then they said, well, you know, on good faith, will you, will you come film? And then we can, you know, sign the contracts or whatever. And so I went and filmed and I was so stressed out that night. And I, I ended up just crying and just being like a mess. And I called my gun. I was like, I don't know if I can do this. And he's like, then don't. And so we, you know, we had, we sat down with production and, um, I was able to, you know, get out of my contract because it was just, for me, it was like becoming like a health issue. Like I was just not in a good place with my anxiety and depression. Right. So on the show, we did see a lot about your postpartum depression. Uh, and it was really sad to see. Um, how did you overcome that? And what advice do you have for anyone listening who is experiencing that currently uh, to overcome it? Uh, thankfully, Micah's mom is a naturopathic doctor and she's a holistic you know, uh, practitioner. And so she had referred me to a couple of supplements. And the one that worked the best for me, it's called 5 and then HTP. Mm. And that one worked miracles. I also tried one called SAMI. It's um, capital S A M and then a little E. Um, and that one worked, you know, okay. But the five HTP really, really turned me around to the next quarter. Like it just, it was like life changing. Um, and then it was just a matter of, you know, talking. I felt like so isolated. And it's like, you don't want to tell people because you just, you don't want to be judged or you feel like, you know, you're going to, look like you're not a good mom. And so it's like, I had all these great friends, but I never told people, I just didn't even know how to talk about it or what to talk about. And, um, so it's just finding a good support system. I mean, thankfully, you know, I had Micah and his mom and then my sister is, I have four sisters, but my one main sister, I I confided in her the most. And so that kind of got me through it. And then just working out a lot and, um, making sure I was taking, you know, self-care days for myself where I would, you know, get time away from the kids and, Right. Um, you know, just all that kind of stuff. So I would tell people just, you know, definitely try and get outside at least once a day, try and get some time away from your children. Um, and then, you know, I would try the the holistic route before you try um Western medicine, you know, prescriptions because a lot of them can be addicting, a lot of them can have the act- the actual opposite effect on you. And um, you know, so five HTP for me was just really amazing. Yeah, that's great that you got to do the holistic route on that instead of Western medicine. So on Instagram, we asked everyone to send in their questions for this episode uh, for you, Peggy. And uh, a lot of people want to know, what is your skincare routine? And uh, do you have any natural products you want to share with people? Skincare, I, um, I, you know, I, I've never let my face in the sun. So, um, I'm thankful that I did that early on because, you know, I like any teenager, I I like to go to the beach, but I was modeling by the time I was 12. And so I always wore huge hats and I was the girl on the beach that would be laying there with my friends and I would have a towel over my head. (laughs) So, um, the biggest, you know, the biggest, the biggest thing I tell people is just keep your face out of the sun. Um, I use sunscreen every day. Um, you know, like I try to do a 30 or a 50. I, and, um, and then I just, I have like a routine where it's like cleanser and toner and, a you know, a really good uh, medical grade skincare line. There's so many different ones out there. Um, and, you know, I think it's just, and even some of the drugstore, like you don't have to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Uh, some of the drugstore brands are great too. I've used Rock, ROC, and they have some really good anti-aging skincare um, products. Um, right now I I'm using Zoe, which is Z O and it's, um, it's, I think it's Dr. Abaji's line. Um, that's really great. And, uh, my girlfriend, Nancy Pellegrino, she's got a, um, a esthetician. Um, she's got a practice. She's a nurse practitioner and she has a practice in Newport beach. She came out with her own line called the route and that's, um, at Ulta and it's considered a clean product. So it has no chemicals, no animal testing, no parabens, you know, no fragrance, which is great for my husband. Um, so I kind of bounce around a bunch of things, but I really think the most important thing is, is just to always have sunscreen. 
you know, always be cleansing and then keep up on stuff. I'm not a person that likes to go do filler. I do Botox, but I try to, you know, wait like four months between my next appointment. Right. Um, and then I just, I stay up on lasers. I think lasers, um, there's so many great, you know, things you can do besides fillers. Right. Definitely. Yeah. And every dermatologist will tell you that SPF is the most important thing, you know, for skincare and making sure you can keep your face young looking, you know? So that's great. Absolutely. So I love skincare. I'm so excited about all the different products. I'm excited to go meet Jen Armstrong and see what kind of products she has because she's a doctor of dermatology, isn't she? If I remember right. Yes, she is. Yeah. I like that. She'll probably come out with her own line now that um, she's going to be on the show. I mean, that would be the smart thing to do. Maybe. There's just so many great lines out there. Why would you even want to bother? You know, stick with what you know. Do your, I mean, bacon, vodka, all the things all the girls have tried over the years. (laughs) Well, vodka, I've heard vodka closes your pores and I've tried it before. And I mean, I don't know. I think it might help a little bit, but I don't know if I noticed a huge difference. Right. Peggy, when you were on the show, did you have your own line of something you were selling? Like Gretchen had purses, then she had makeup. Vicky had bacon vodka. (laughs) No, I was, uh, you know, I, I think, and that was maybe, maybe that was a bad thing. But I remember when, um, we went to our first meeting before, like we started filming season six Tamara had said to me, okay, you got to take, you know, look at this as a business. And I was like, oh, I'm coming on this to have fun. You know, I, I have postpartum depression. Like I, I just want to have fun. Um, and so I think it is smart to kind of think ahead and think of, like, okay, what would I want to do? So I was planning, my husband and I are really big wine drinkers. And so I was planning to come out with a wine in season seven. And then since I decided to leave, then, you know, I didn't come out with it, but I did come out a couple of years after I was on the show, I came out with my own workout DVD. Um, Great. and they still sell it on, on Amazon. And it's, it's, um, Peggy Tano's 30 minute total body workout with your toddler. And it teaches moms to hold their babies as their weight and resistance. And you can do the whole workout with your baby. Nice. So how did that go with like the sales aspect of all that? Did you, were you successful at those? Um, you know, it, it did well. I mean, it still sells, but I think, you know, really I was trying to get it, um, on, you know, HSN and QVC and I have contacts there because I used to do before I was ever on the show, I did a lot of hosting, uh, a lot of where I'd come in and be like a co-host for a product on HSN and QVC both. Okay. Um, but it wasn't really a product for them because, because typically they want to do like a series of, you know, if it's a DVD, they want to do a series of DVDs. Oh. Um, and then I had tried to get it into target and it's one of those things you really have to either hire a company to, um, to get it in like a distributor to get it into for you. Mm-hmm. Um, because I just, you know, for me to do it, it was like, I didn't have a lot of time and it just, it takes a lot of time to do it. And. Uh, they have the contacts and it takes a long time because you're calling people and then, oh, okay, this is the wrong person. And then when you finally get to the right person, you got to send them stuff. So at the end of the day, I, you know, I would have liked it if it did a little bit better, but I also didn't put a lot of time and effort into it. So, right. You've got to have a lot of time on your hands to do a product line and it's, it's just a lot. Yeah. And there's so many product lines you can come out with, you know, like everyone, especially housewives. There's so many things people do like Gretchen went into almost like every field. <laughs> so it's just like, you really want to pick, yeah, really want to pick sure. something that you're passionate about, you know? Absolutely. True. So on the show, your girls did modeling up in LA. Are they still doing that now? You know, they're not. And that's partially just because I'm lazy. <laughs> I don't. And COVID. It's, well, COVID stopped a lot of yeah, that stuff too. Right now because of COVID. But also I just, um, it was, it was so draining to, I mean, I, my, you know, I grew up here in Orange County. I think I'm one of the few people that was born and raised and grew up right here in Orange County. Mm-hmm. And I was modeling since I was 12. So literally my mom was driving me back and forth, you know, at least twice a week. And then when uh-huh. I got my license, I literally drove to LA like every day. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I did it. And so it's now the traffic has gotten so bad and I just don't have it in me to drive up there, you know, two hours. And then you go to an audition and it's like a five minute audition. And then you get in the car and come back two hours and then they don't even get the job. It's like, okay, I just don't have the energy for that. And yeah, I just feel like the whole industry's changed and there's so much, there's so many pedophiles out there. And and with my girls, you know, being, you know, at that young age of teen, you know, just getting their teens and they're very pretty. And 
I don't really think I want them in that industry right now. When Cara was doing it, I pulled her out of modeling and only let her do commercials and film because she could act and she had a bigger than life personality. So she would beat out most of the quiet little pretty girls. She was so ADD. <laughs> uh. That's smart. Yeah, but and then one commercial you don't mind driving because you're going to make thirty five thousand dollars, and a movie you're going to get fifty to a hundred thousand. So True. we just started doing only theatrical, and boy, what a difference that was. And I wanted to do that with my girls, but London is actually kind of shy. She's uh, it's funny. She's she's definitely got her mom's spirit. Where like if you know somebody said something mean to her sister, like she will be the first person to go stand up for her. But she got really shy on auditions and stuff, so I just didn't push it. Um, But now she's really gotten into singing and she has an unbelievable voice. Nice. So yeah, she's been singing and she just um, cut her first single. It was, well, it wasn't, I'm sorry. It wasn't hers. It was, she's explained it to me. She's like, mom, mom, it's called, I forget what you can call it, but she, it was another person's song, but she sang it. And so she's now starting to write and it was a cover. Yeah. And then she's writing and she's going to start taking a songwriting class. And so I think with the singing thing, she, you know, if she wants it, I know she can go really far with it. And we have a lot of contacts in that industry that, you know, we could help that could help. It's just, right. I don't want to push her because she's still shy and she, you know, she has to get build that confidence and, you know, be ready for it. Yeah. That's so cool. To Are you still living in the same house? Cause you had talked about selling and buying something out and you were thinking of moving. I am, yeah, I- we're still in our house. We, um, we gosh it's, it's we've been here 15 years i can't believe it's time's gone that fast but um we were we were talking about i think you had a friend you were trying to hook me up with that that could help us we were looking for property out in Smecula and we were going to move out there but now it's funny because um you know mike and i both are born and raised here and we're from here and we always said we'd never leave california but now the way that it, everything's just gotten so crazy and you know our i'm just not a fan of our governor and now that he back in um we for the first time ever we've actually said you know what we think we could move out of california so we're kind of changing yeah gears. i bought a house i bought a house Where'd in you florida house? and i'm thinking by cara in florida about four minutes away i bought a house on the bay with a boat dock and oh my and god I, that's amazing I, congratulations i chickened out and rented it out for the last year <laughs> now what oh area god. is it in jacksonville beach Okay. So I haven't been to that area, but we have been looking, Florida's on our radar and we've been looking just online at houses and stuff in like Palm Beach area, um, Boca. Oh yeah. Palm Beach is really nice. I live North of Orlando actually. And I love it here. It's always super nice and it's just really laid back. I feel like California is crazy right now and the taxes are so high and the prices of homes. It's crazy. I agree. Yeah. So we're, Florida's on our radar, but Texas is on our radar even more so. And we, it's we are too hot there. in Texas, baby. Unless you're going to mm-hmm. do Texas and Florida. But no, if you do, t- my friends that moved to Texas have Texas and Montana. And my other friends who moved to Florida have Florida and someplace else to go away the few months of the summer. So and I think that's what we would do. We would probably, yeah. if, we, if we pick there, we would, we would come back here for the summers. But I just love it out there. Everybody is so nice and it's so green and lush. Um, yeah, and I have a lot right. of friends in Dallas. So yeah, we'll see. We're kind of playing it by ear. Sweet. Right. It's hard to leave once they start their high schools and get involved in stuff. It's hard to leave their friends. Well, my girls actually homeschool. They, they were forced to homeschool thanks to our wonderful Gavin. So they were forced to homeschool um, last year because, um, you know, being holistic, I never did any of their immunizations since they were born. I did like natural homeopathic ones. And so there was a law passed. There used to be, you know, a thing where they would say, oh, you know, if if you're not immunized, it's fine. But, you know, we want you to, you have to have like a religious exemption. So we were always able to get that. And then all of a sudden in January, they passed all these new laws and you can't even have a religious or medical exemption anymore. You have to. Are you sure? um, I thought you could have a religious one. Hmm. Nope, not anymore. So I have like literally, there's probably five of my friends that all just moved out of state because of that. Wow, um, that's and that's a, that's another reason that we're thinking of moving. So my girls started homeschool last year, and the one we were in last year was horrible. They hated it, and this year we're in a new one, and they actually really like it. So it's great. It you know it makes it. Um, I don't have to deal with it, which is great because I'm not the most patient person. But 
Um, you know, I check in on them every day to make sure they're on track, but they pretty much have Zoom calls with teachers and they can meet other kids. And we have like a big event on Tuesday where they get to meet everybody in person. Mm. So it's working out great for us so far. Wow. Yeah, I, I cherish the days when the kids went back to school. It was like heaven. It's like, okay, where are we <laughs> going for lunch? And let's go to the gym. And I was so excited oh, when me. they would. They were little. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Trust me. That's, that's, and that's why I, I think that I, we're on kind of, you know, thinking that if we move out of state, that would be another reason because then they can go back to school. And I definitely, London will, will be starting high school next year. I definitely want her to experience high school in person, you know? Definitely. Well, if you're going to go to Florida, make sure to check check out Jacksonville Beach because Ponte Vedra is like a really beautiful area there. And then they have ranch areas also, but they never hardly ever get any um, hurricanes. They're at the top. Yeah, they're so so north. It's been, yeah, and they're best, you know, best kept secret until COVID hit. And then, of course, prices went up a whole bunch because everybody from New York moved. But you should check well, it out just to see it because it is really beautiful. Yeah, I will. So is it? What's the? Is it? Yeah. Is um. You f- you fly into Jacksonville. Okay. And how yeah. far? How far is that? It's, Gina, how far is that from Miami? Um, I don't know about Miami, but I know when we go to Orlando to go to Disneyland, it's a couple hour drive. But oh, you jump easy. on a okay. plane and you can go everywhere. You know, she goes to mm-hmm. Miami if she wants to take a cruise ship somewhere. But the prices are still not as crazy as Orlando and the other places. And there's a lot of new construction because it's kind of like Westwood in California yeah. where they tore down a bunch of the old and put up a bunch of the new. So oh, there's wow. a lot of lot of cool real estate things. I think Cara and her husband own about six Airbnbs that just they're killing it with those things. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Well, it was great talking to you. Peggy, will you text me your email? I want to send you this thing I'm going to see if you want to go. Yeah, for sure. Thanks. Yeah, it was okay. kind of fun. And Peggy, tell everyone where they can go find you on Instagram and social media and everything. It's at OC Peggy Tanos. All right, perfect. On Instagram. And um, I think Twitter, it's just Peggy Tanos. So yeah, you can find me there. And Thank you for having me guys and um, everyone out oh, there. It's great talking. I'm yeah. so proud of you both for doing this. <laughs> yeah, it was a ton of fun. Hey. All right. I hope to see you soon. And please Gina. say hi to your husband for me. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. Thanks. I will for sure. Okay. Hope to see you soon. All right. Mm-hmm. Bye. It was so much fun talking to Peggy today. She always has the best holistic tips and remedies. And, you know, it's so interesting because she was like the first real housewife who talked about natural products on the show. Also, you guys, Gina's YouTube channel is coming out in late November, so you won't want to miss out on that. You can find the link on her Instagram page. Make sure to subscribe to Our Reality everywhere you get your podcasts and follow our Instagrams. Gina's is at Gina Keo and mine is at Kent.Perry. Thank you all so much for listening to today's episode. Bye, everyone. <laughs>